So I bring you greetings from Nigeria, and I appreciate this opportunity given to me to come and address you. And so I want to welcome all of us to this great event. As has been said, my name is Yetunde Oni. In the choice of uh, the topic of discussion by NAFDAQ, which is a regulatory authority, like we have been told, we were quite mindful of the fact that we're talking about drugs. And so we're like, what subject would we talk about that will arouse the interest of the prospective clients and even the clients that are here that are willing to engage in a hitch-free business trade in Nigeria? So we thought of regulations. Let me also commend the earlier speakers for the discussion or the presentations. What they said to us is not any different from what is uh, operational in Nigeria. Beautiful presentations. And I remember I said to one of them, there are two areas that I want to key into, which has to do with the Trading Institute as well as the survey. Those two events are very paramount to the effectiveness and the efficiency of any regulatory authority. And so I want to apologize that my presentation was sent last night, but I'm told that it was the lady couldn't up upload it. So I'm going to read from my laptop that is here. But I want to appeal that we make this presentation available to everybody here today. We make this presentation available to everybody present here today. So typical of any presentation, I have a framework uh, that will cover the introduction, the mandate of NAFDAQ, the real essence of regulations, some NAFDAQ regulations in place, the guidelines for importation of pharmaceuticals, then the state of Nigeria, that is NAFDAQ, and India, which is the pharma trade relationship, and then I will conclude. There is an abstract there that is really key to why the choice of the world, of the regulations that we are talking about. So by way of introduction, as you might be aware, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, is the National Drug Regulatory Authority in Nigeria. Just like I have my counterpart came up a while ago and spoke eloquently about what Indian Regulatory Authority is all about. And so what do we do in NAFDAQ? We implement and enforce laws and regulations on drug administration and control. There are other products that we regulate, but the discussion of today is going to be centered on just drugs and other related products. This forum is particularly important to NAFDAQ because it's providing us with an opportunity to update our stakeholders when we get back home on current trends in regulatory activities. I've seen that a great deal in the, in the presentation from the CDCSO, right? And so my meeting that is coming up in about two weeks is going to harp on this because we cannot run away from it. Like he said, we don't have the resources. Therefore, the earlier the better we started sharing information and conserve the resources to address other areas of the needs because emergencies will keep coming up every now and then. Again, this forum will help us at ensuring that only the right quality drugs and other NAFDAQ regulated products are manufactured, exported, advertised, sold, and used in Nigeria. So what really are regulations? Because I'm talking about regulations. The Indian has given us framework of what a regulatory authority should be seeing us doing. 
regulations are simply official rules of, or instructions that must be obeyed. Because if you don't have the regulations, you will err. And it will give room for a lot of errors. And we're talking about health. And we don't want a situation whereby a whole community will be wiped off because of a small error. Regulations are administrative rules issued by an organization which are used to guide or prescribe the conduct of members of that organization. And you can also look at regulations as forms of legislative acts. No wonder, therefore, mindful of the fact that we must have laws, NAFDAQ was established by decree number four. Mr. was talking, he talked about constant reviews. NAFDAQ was first of established by a decree in 1993. And you all know that in Nigeria presently, we're under a democratic dispensation. So it's no longer a decree, it has been reviewed. And it's now known as NAFDAQ Act Cap N1 LFN 2004. And so what is the mandate? The law stipulates that NAFDAQ should control and regulate the manufacture, importation, exportation, distribution, advertisement, sale, and use of a group of products collectively known as regulated products. And these classes of products are seven in number, namely food, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices, chemicals, and packaged water, including drinks. All of these are regulated by NAFTAC under that act. It's a huge responsibility. Why is it huge? It is huge because it's ensuring that NAFDAQ must make sure that all drugs and pharmaceuticals for human and veterinary use that are manufactured, imported, distributed, advertised, and sold in Nigeria are registered in accordance with the drugs and related products registration decree. Is a huge one. It also makes sure that the foods that we have are wholesome, safe, and nutritive. And all registered products must have to conform to acceptable standards of quality, safety, and efficacy, including wholesomeness. The scope of this mandate puts the responsibility of safeguarding the public health off on the agency, and this touches on the life of every Nigerian, not only Nigerians, on the life of anybody that finds him or herself in Nigeria. Because you never can tell when and where the discomfort will come from. And you might not be within the confines of your environment. So wherever you find yourself, you should be ready and should be prepared and you should be assured that whatever it is that you're going to apply to yourself is of the right quality. Our mandate also makes sure that no fake or counterfeit medicines or other substandard, substandard regulated products are produced or imported for distribution, sale, or use in Nigeria. One of my counterparts came up and talked about SSFFC. The 70th session of the World Health Assembly is coming up in a few days. And we'll begin to now talk about SF. Because if you ask me, the SSFFC is kind of tongue twisting. So how can we comp really, really, really? It's kind of tongue twisting. So how can we simplify it? Maybe I shouldn't let the card out of the bag here, but Maybe I could just say that we can simplify and just bring it out to SF. Whatever SF means, when we get to WHA, WHA in a couple of days, we know what it's all about. We also want to make sure that in Nigeria, marketed cosmetics are not harmful to the body, which means that our regulations 
will have to toe the line of international best practices. Still on essence of regulation, I take it down to what even happens in our various homes. We have rules and regulations guiding modus operandi in our various homes. And so it is simply expected that in our various homes, in our various offices, we would have that essence in place. So the essence is to guide the activities of the agency with respect to the control and management of the products listed under our mandate, and we should ensure smooth and fair play among the regulated. Whatever I am doing to manufacturer A should also be the same that I'm applying to manufacturer B. No disparity of any sort. We want to also want to guide again the sale of unsafe, shop standard and spurious products in the market and ensure availability of safe and quality products that meet approved specification. All of these are geared towards better health outcomes to protect our public health. We also want to make sure that the location of premises, manufacturing processes, quality assurance systems, and release procedures meet with current good manufacturing practices requirements. And by and large, we will so contribute to the growth and upgrade of business enterprises to attain international acceptable standards. However, ineffective implementation and control measures and non-compliance with regulate, regulations by relevant stakeholders encourage circulation of counterfeit drugs and other substandard products with attendant public health implications. And therefore, without adequate and effective regulations, the marketplace will be flooded with dangerously high volume of equally dangerous products, which is not the essence of our being in that particular sector. Because this will have grave consequences on public health. And so in Nigeria, we have the national drug policy, and the policy was formulated in 1990 and is regularly reviewed. There's no situation that is permanent. You have to constantly change with the changes within the environment. Otherwise, you remain obsolete. And the essence of the review is to make available at all times to the Nigerian populace adequate supplies of drugs that are effective, affordable, safe, and of good quality, ensure the rational use of such drugs, and stimulate increased local production of essential drugs. I wish we had this uh, uh, to, be up to, to be on the screen, and then I can tell you where you can assess this national drug policy. But given the fact that I've been told that we're going to be, sh we're going to be sharing this um, uh, presentation, you'll have access to that website. You can link onto it and read all about our national drug policy. We also have Decree 19 of 1993 as amended. There are other regulations, and where to access them are so listed in this presentation. So I can really go to all the things. We also have guidelines for imported drugs, quite a number of them. NAFDA Good Practices for Pharmaceutical Quality Control Laboratories. The guidelines support the regulations and they tell you the step-by-step -step activities of what you have to do to accomplish that regulation that has been put in place. Quite a number of them listed. Guidelines for processing drug demand reduction programs, guidelines for packaging sub bulk semi-finished drug products in Nigeria, guidelines for additional source and or change of source of registered imported regulated products in Nigeria, quite a number of them. So what are the requirements for marketing authorization? Because that's the seal that you give onto the product, the drug product, 
that you are using. Three minutes, it, man. In, you don't mind. That, I'm going to mind here because we had so many minutes for my other counterpart, but I can assure you that I won't stay more than five minutes. Thank you so much. I won't take more than five minutes. So, NAFDAQ uses product licenses registration as a tool for controlling regulated products for commerce, and it's based on, you must have a documentation, some kind of expression of interest. I like that statement that everything of yours now is uploaded and that you don't make use of the hard copy any longer. We're almost getting there in Nigeria. You start your registration process E, and we want to finish E, but it takes quite a while to be able to do it, but at least we have started the process. Dozier evaluation, we do that. Satisfactory GMP, like you said, laboratory analysis, and then of course the product approval committee. Over the years, None of the policies, laws, regulations, or guidelines have been revoked, but rather, most of the regulations and guidelines have been periodically reviewed. What is the effectiveness of these guidelines and regulations? Or what has been the effectiveness? Corporates are being brought to book because we're able to get them, since they're not compliant, and a number of convictions have been secured. Past records have shown that. Hundreds of new molecules and brands have been attracted into the market. A new proposal to have a punitive punishment for fake drug offenses is also in process. What is the state of Nigeria-India relationship? That's NAVDAQ and pharma trade relationship. Because we've been doing this over and over again. And given the very high volume of pharmaceutical sector business between Nigeria and India, with the trade balance almost 100% in favor of India, there have been cases, I need us to listen to this, there have been cases where some unscrupulous businessmen from both countries, I mean Nigeria and India, have engaged in production and shipment of some fake and substandard pharmaceutical products. And in order to checkmate some of these unscrupulous people, NAVDAQ has engaged consultants in India to carry out pre-shipment analysis of all finished pharmaceutical products being exported to Nigeria from India. Currently, over 13,451 pharmaceutical products manufactured in India are, are registered by NAFDAQ and are being sold in Nigeria. That's a huge business relationship that we cannot afford to toy with. And the reason why we should work as a team. Again, about 927 companies or manufacturers in, Indian, in India are involved in the process of ensuring that we have that total of about 14,000 products. It is important to highlight Another policy that we have in place in Nigeria, which requires all promoters of imported registered pharmaceutical products that have completed two cycles, five years each, depending on the class of product that you have. The marketing authorization can have a lifespan of either two years or five years. So if you have completed two cycles of five years of each, of registration equivalent to 10 years of marketing authorization, we ask that you commence local production of such products in Nigeria. And because you are talking to the NRA in Nigeria, you are going to have some ease of doing business in terms of getting the land where you will bring technology to Nigeria. And everything is going for us there. NAVDAQ also has a policy in place to fully support and simplify approval processes for companies willing to transfer technology by commencing local production in Nigeria. In conclusion, <laughs> NAFDAQ has deployed multifaceted strategies evolve, involving effective collaboration with relevant stakeholders, capacity building, and deployment of cutting-edge technologies to combat drug counterfeiting. The fight against drug counterfeiting 
requires the support of all well-meaning individuals, organizations, and other international organizations such as WHO, DFID, and so on and so forth. I implore you all to ensure you have a good understanding of all NAVDAC regulations which are also available on our website. I want to thank you very much for your attention.